Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation. Today, I will be talking about the two types of the I means in this presentation. Uh, first, the lamellar tearing is one kind of the crack observed both in the uh, weld and the heat affected zone. But the formation of this kind of the crack or tearing is more commonly observed in the heat affected zone. And another one is called the cold cracking. Uh, or also known as the delayed cracking, also termed as the hydrogen assisted cracking or hydrogen induced cracking. These are the four different names which are given uh, to the another type of the crack which is observed in the heat affected zone. So, um, uh, if you see in uh, for the lamellar tearing, uh, this is mainly caused by the uh, the presence of the inclusions. This is one thing. Uh, whenever the tensile residual stresses set in during the welding, presence of the uh, the inclusions. Uh, obviously, these are either flake or layered form. Uh, under the tensile residual stresses, decohesion of the such kind of inclusions from the metal matrix uh, leads to the, um, uh, the formation of the uh, lamellar tearing. Lamellar tearing. So, what is a mandatory for the lamellar tearing is the tensile residual stresses, and which are basically uh, developed due to the shrinkage of the weld metal. And uh, apart from this, the presence of the inclusions is the another an important thing. And inclusions of the spherical shape are not that harmful as compared to the lamellar or the layered or the flaky uh, shaped inclusions. So, uh, it is uh, so, so the morphology, like morphology of the inclusions, also matter in, uh, in increasing the lamellar tearing or in determining the lamellar tearing tendency like the fine uh, fine inclusions will not be that harmful as the large size inclusions and uh, uh, similarly the um, nodular or the globular shape uh, inclusions will not be that harmful as the flaky or the noodle or the uh, layered shape uh, uh, the inclusions. So, these are the two primary regions. Apart from these, what we see that uh, the presence of the hydrogen also increases such kind of the cracking tendency and the hardness increase in the hardness of the weld metal uh, and the uh, or the, the heat affected zone also promotes the lamellar tearing tendency. So, higher hardness, higher tensile residual stresses, higher inclusion or higher the hydrogen content in the heat affected zone or in the weld metal, they promote the lamellar tearing tendency. So, the best way is to uh, is to preheat the plates before the welding, so that the tensile residual stress magnitude can be reduced and if at all hydrogen is present, it can be diffused out by preheat or increase in temperature and the preheat will also help to lower down the hardness or will, will, will promote the softening of the, the base metal and thereby it will reduce the tendency for cracking. So, this is uh, this was in brief about the lamellar tearing and where does it occur, what are the causes of the lamellar tearing and what should be done to uh, reduce the lamellar tearing tendency. So, all the things that we can do for reducing the tensile residual stresses, reducing the hydrogen content and uh, reducing the inclusions in the base or in the heat affected zone should be tried for uh, reducing the lamellar tearing tendency. Another one is the cold crack or the delayed crack, various names which have been given very commonly known as cold crack. Cold, this is called, uh, this type of cracking is called cold cold crack because it occurs normally at very, at low temperature conditions. Uh, 
like maybe uh, 5 degree or 10 degree or 0 degree centigrade. So, under the low temperature conditions this kind of cracking tendency is uh, observed delayed cracking is called so this is also called glade, delayed cracking because sometimes it is observed after like say 10 minutes of the welding sometimes 2 hours of the welding or the 2 months and sometimes even after the 2 years of the welding depending upon the hydrogen content in the heat affected zone or the weld metal depending upon the magnitude of the tensile stresses acting in the weld joint and uh, depending upon the hardness uh, of the weld metal and the heat affected zone and the structural constituent of the weld metal and the heat affected zone. So, these are the four factors that significantly determine how fast the cold cracks will be developing since this type of, this type of crack cracks are observed after few uh, after some time of the development of the cracks development of the weld joint and that is why they are called uh, delayed cracking. This is also called hydrogen induced crack or hydrogen assisted cracks because the hydrogen is uh, the hydrogen plays a major role in development of the such kind of cracks uh, which occur at low temperature under the presence of the tensile residual stresses especially in case when the hardness of the metal is high and the structure is sensitive for cracking. So, these are the reasons why they are called so by the different names and uh, now we will see uh, the causes of uh, such kind of the cracks. So, uh, as, as I have said uh, the cracking for the cracking it is necessary that uh, either the tensile residual stresses, uh, tensile stresses are present or the um, um, uh, shear stresses are present in the weld joint. So, this kind of crack can occur either in the weld metal if it has a favorable conditions like uh, the martensitic structure, high tensile residual stresses, higher concentration of the hydrogen as well as um, the higher hardness. So, um, the weld metal or it can also occur in the heat affected zone. It is commonly observed in the heat affected zone and heat. So, uh, now uh, coming to the kind of metal systems which are sensitive for such kind of cracking. So, if you will see um, uh, like say this is the weld joint of the steel. So, uh, the cracks may occur uh, in the weld or in the heat affected zone. Uh, so, the carbon steels uh, whose hardenability is limited means not that high they uh, their HAZ is found sensitive for HAZ is found sensitive for uh, cold cracking. While in case of the alloy steels having the high hardenability this the weld as well as HAZ both show cracking tendency for the cold uh, cracking. So, uh, this is about the metal systems and the kind of cold cracking uh, and where does it occur commonly or it is observed commonly in the weld or in the heat affected zone. So, this is co common for the carbon steels and uh, uh, in case of the alloy steels both weld as well as heat affected zone for the alloy steels. The things that are needed for such kind of cracking is uh, like the presence of the tensile residual stresses, one hydrogen concentration, two. So, all these will be promoting the cracking tendency and the three higher hardness, uh, hardness greater than 350 uh, VHN uh, actually promotes the cracking and the sensitive structure like martensite. So, these are the four, uh, uh, cons, uh, four uh, factors that uh, significantly promote the cold cracking tendency and whenever these are present the steels found sensitive for cold cracking uh, tendency. So, um, to what can be done to avoid these? So, we need to work on all these uh, 
four components in order to um, lower down the uh, cracking tendency or the cold cracking tendency. So, for, uh, for understanding these uh, we know that any weld metal whenever welded using the uh, uh, fusion welding process uh, the weld joint is subjected to the higher tensile residual stresses. So, the weld metal invariably has the uh, tensile residual stresses. So, in order to reduce the uh, tensile residual stresses, we have limited approaches like we can do the preheating. So, that differential thermal expansion coffee differential thermal expansion and contraction in the weld and the heat affected zone and the base metal can be reduced. So, preheating is uh, one thing which can be done in order to reduce the tensile residual stresses. Another is use of the, uh, the low yield strength or the soft filler metal. This is another thing because the magnitude of the maximum residual stresses can be equal to the yield strength of the metal. So, if the yield strength of filler metal is lower, then it will help to reduce the maximum magnitude of the residual stresses being developed. Say in, in case of the steels mainly the austenitic stainless steel filler or the nickel fillers are commonly used because they are somewhat more ductile and are of the lower yield strength. So, that helps in reducing the residual stresses and if possible go for the PWHT or the post well heat treatment. So, that whatever, whatever residual stresses have been set in they can be uh, eliminated or they can be uh, reduced uh, as far as. So, these are the approaches which can be used for reducing the uh, tensile residual stresses in the weld metal and uh, the hydrogen content for reducing the hydrogen content what is important for reducing the hydrogen content because it it is a very big factor which leads to the development of the cold cracks. So, for reducing the hydrogen content use of use of hydrogen free consumables like shielding gas electrode or the fillers or the coatings whatever uh, can contribute for the presence of the hydrogen in the weld metal uh, that should be avoided or if the electrodes need to be used and if they have been exposed to the atmosphere then proper baking of the electrodes is to be done. So, that whatever moisture has been there it can be driven off. Another approach is that use of the preheat. Preheating uh, will allow the rejection of the hydrogen more effectively uh, because it will uh, whenever due to the differential solubility of the hydrogen in the liquid and solid state as the temperature comes down. Uh, the hydrogen is rejected and this rejected hydrogen should get enough time for escaping and that would be possible only if uh, the high temperature is maintained for the longer period which is possible through the preheat. So, preheating of the, uh, the base metal during the welding helps to reduce uh, helps to diffuse out the hydrosum of the hydrogen uh, from the weld as well as the heat affected zone and that in turn will help to reduce the cracking tendency. Uh, preheating, uh, so uh, reducing the hardness, hardness of the, the weld or of the heat affected zone. For this purpose basically we can apply the preheat, so preheating uh, or the post weld heat treatment both can be tried for uh, uh, reducing the hardness of the base metal or of the weld metal so, uh, or of the heat affected zone. So, that the cracking tendency can be reduced and the martensitic transformation martens means the crack sensitive structure like the formation of the martensite in the weld as well as the heat affected zone also uh, should be avoided and for this purpose uh, we can use uh, the preheating. So, that the softer structures are formed instead of the uh, sensitive structure. So, this is the um, this is the base of the um, the cold cracking as far as the factors which cause to the cold cracking and uh, uh, the methods which can be tried for 
uh, reducing the crack cold cracking tendency. Uh, now, I will go systematically through the, uh, the various aspects related to the cold cracking. So, uh, it is a low temperature cracking normally termed as cold cracking as I have said, uh, hydrogen induced cracking, uh, hydrogen assisted cracking or the delayed cracking and you can see uh, this type of cracking is observed uh, next to the weld. So, this is the fusion boundary and uh, next to the weld it is being observed and it is starting at the toe of the weld because this is the area of the high stress concentration which uh, triggers the crack and then it grows. Um, uh, uh, near the fusion boundary in the heat affected zone. So, which uh, where it is having the favorable conditions. These are the common causes which are observed for the development of the cold cracks, hydrogen dissolved in the weld metal, uh, hydrogen dissolved in the steels like uh, in the weld metal or in the heat affected zone, development of the tensile residual stresses in the weld or heat affected zone, higher hardness or the brittleness of the heat affected zone and the crack sensitive structure like the martensite formation in the heat affected zone. So, if we see here uh, this is what I have already said in the carbon steels HAZ is sensitive for uh, the cold cracking while the alloy steels are in case of the alloy steels both HAZ and the weld are susceptible for the cold cracking. And so, for development of the cold cracks or hydrogen assisted cracks, it is necessary that there is sufficient amount of the hydrogen, susceptible microstructure, uh, sufficient hardness and the presence of the tensile uh, stresses um, uh, leads to the development of the hydrogen assisted cracks. As far as the uh, comparative crack sensitivity of the three micro constituents commonly observed micro constituents in the steels are concerned. Ferritic steels have the minimum cracking tendency, thereafter somewhat more cracking tendency with the Benetic and then martensitic. So, the formation of the martensite uh, frequently uh, means commonly promotes the cold cracks in the steel. So, if the preheating or the post weld heat treatment whatever help can help us in, uh, uh, in doing away with the martensite then that will help to avoid the cracking tendency. Now, we will be going into the mechanism and the causes of the cracks. So, here we will see that the solubility of the hydrogen in the well uh, in the liquid state and the solid state is different. Further, the solubility also solubility of the hydrogen in the iron changes with the temperature due to the change in the uh, crystal structure or due to the change in the phases which are observed. Uh, we know that the steel at the room temperature will be having very limited solubility like say 1 ppm where mainly we have iron carbide and the ferrite. So, uh, as we increase the temperature uh, the ferrite and the iron carbide they change into the austenite. So, whenever this change takes place there is a sudden jump in the solubility of the hydrogen. We know that increasing temperature this is the direction for decreasing temperature and as we increase uh, yeah, we are increasing the temperature there is increasing solubility of the hydrogen in the iron. So, there is sudden increase in the solubility of hydrogen in the iron even in the solid state as soon as the transformation from the austenite or iron carbide to the sorry ferrite alpha uh, ferrite to the austenite takes place. This happens primarily at say for pure iron it happens at uh, 910 degree centigrade. So, uh, this the here also in the austenite the solubility of the hydrogen in the austenite keep on uh, keeps on increasing. Uh, with the temperature and then there is some drop, some of the drop in the solubility of the hydrogen uh, is observed that is primarily due to the again change in crystal structure from FCC to the BCC due to the formation of the delta ferrite and then again after this uh, we reach to the melting point and as soon as the melt uh, iron reaches to the molten state there is a sudden increase in the solubility. Uh, up to the 30 ppm. So, the solubility of the hydrogen in the iron changes from 1 ppm to the 30 ppm uh, from the solid state to the liquid state. So, what happens in case of the welding due to the this difference in the solubility? Let us say uh, we this is the direction of the welding and this is the, the region next to the weld metal and this is the base metal. So, base metal of course will have the uh, 
the ferrite and the iron carbide but whatever region falling in the weld metal zone or next to the fusion boundary that will be falling in the heat affected zone. So, we know that heat affected zone uh, will have both austenite and uh, uh, after the cooling it will be resulting in the ferrite, perlite or martensite whatever as per the cooling rate. So, uh, let us say this, this is the weld bead uh, having the hydrogen. Uh, at higher temperature hydrogen can dissolve more amount of the uh, hydrogen can be dissolved in larger quantity as compared to that at low temperature. So, this is the liquid metal if it is having the hydrogen uh, after the solidification the since the hydrogen can be dissolved in the larger quantity in the uh, austenite. So, it will be here the weld metal will have the austenite. Uh, weld metal will have the austenite and hydrogen will be can be dissolved easily in the austenite and uh, in course of the cooling as soon as the austenite starts uh, cooling it forms the alpha ferrite and iron carbide. So, as soon as its formation starts the hydrogen is rejected, hydrogen is reje rejected to the base metal. So, where it will be rejected in the base metal since the base metal uh, or in the heat affected zone which is still at the higher temperature since uh, uh, we know that how uh, let us say this case uh, this is the region which is the weld metal and this is the heat affected zone. So, the weld will be solidifying and then cooling first and thereafter the heat affected zone. So, the weld metal may be at the lower temperature, but the heat affected zone which is below the surface will still be at higher temperature and that is why what we will see that the weld has solidified and its temperature has reduced. So, it has converted into the alpha and iron carbide, but the heat affected zone is still at high temperature. So, it is of the austenite. So, the, the weld metal which has transformed into the ferrite and the iron carbide will be rejecting the hydrogen because of the lower solubility to the austenite. So, in this is the region where hydrogen will be transferred from the weld metal to the heat affected zone and once it has got the hydrogen means heat affected zone has received the hydrogen because of the high solubility of the austenite subsequently this region will also be cooling down. So, uh, the after cooling the hydrogen will remain uh, in the heat affected zone and due to the higher cooling rate if the uh, cooling rate is high enough in the uh, heat affected zone then it will be forming the martensite. We know that the weld as well as the heat affected zone region generally experience the tensile residual stresses and if uh, the presence of the hydrogen formation of the martensite presence of the tensile residual stresses and higher hardness all these uh, things if they are present then they, this simply promotes the cracking of the heat affected zone. Actually the cracking of the weld metal can be reduced to some extent by uh, using the suitable filler like austenitic filler, but the cracking of the uh, uh, sorry the cracking of the uh, weld metal can be reduced by using the suitable filler like uh, austenite uh, austenitic filler uh, which can absorb more amount of the hydrogen or which is of the softer uh, which is softer material offering the greater ductility, but the uh, not much can be done for the uh, for reducing the cracking tendency of the heat affected zone except the preheating kind of thing. So, and the hydrogen solubility uh, hydrogen diffusivity of the hydrogen uh, is also different in case of the austenite and in case of the ferrite. This is what we can see here austen uh, solubility uh, sorry uh, diffusivity in the y axis the diffusion coefficient of the hydrogen in austenite as well as in the ferrite as a function of the temperature. So, the sol diffusivity in the austenite is somewhat lower than the, that of the ferrite. Ferrite in, in case of ferrite it diffuses very fast as compared to that in uh, austenite. So, these are the typical diagrams or the photographs showing the, the uh, hydrogen induced cracks in the weld as well as in the heat affected zone. So, if the weld is sensitive for the cracks then it will be having the cracks and uh, this is the, the crack in the toe or region of the uh, uh, heat affected zone. So, the toe of the since the toe is the experience is the stress concentration and tensile residual stresses. So, it uh, it promotes the cracking if the conditions are favorable like the hydrogen hardness and the martistic transformation.
of the structure. So, the delayed cracking is the time uh, based cracking where it takes time under the different uh, level of the stresses and uh, the hydrogen concentration. This typical diagram shows that how the cracking starts and uh, how it ends and leads to the fracture. So, as a function of the stresses that is maybe tensile residual stresses or the external stresses as a function of time. If we see if the stresses are high, so this is the band uh, for a given value of the stress for a one value of the stresses cracking will initiate at this point of the time and then crack will uh, grow and then catastrophic fracture or the complete fracture will be taking place at uh, after this much time. So, this band basically shows the time it takes for the growth of the crack until fracture. So, the increase in crack size or the damage is represented by this region and uh, if the uh, of course, for in the presence of the hydrogen. So, as a function of the hydrogen, we will see the another diagram how the cracking tendency and the time requirement for the uh, the failure or the fracture due to the hydrogen induced cracks it takes place. So, under a given set of the stress conditions like um, if we increase the stress magnitude uh, the time required for uh, the complete fracture or initiation of the crack reduces basically. Uh, if we have the lower hydrogen then it can sustain higher stresses and uh, uh, as compared to the case when the hydrogen content in the weld metal is lower. So, this is uh, this what can be explained using uh, this diagram here this diagram goes in like this. So, this is the time and here we have stresses. So, for any magnitude of the stress, this is the time when the crack will uh, the hydrogen uh, crack will initiate uh, and hydrogen induced crack will initiate and this is the time when cracking will complete and the fracture will start. So, higher the stresses lesser the time it takes for complete fracture or initiation of the crack and lower is the stress greater is the time it takes to. Uh, similarly, uh, lower is the hydrogen concentration in the uh, in the weld uh, or in the heat affected zone longer time it will for complete fracture. These are the prevention methods as I have explained earlier reducing the hydrogen level using the low hydrogen electrodes uh, proper baking of the electrodes or the use of the welding process which are without flux or the preheating all these uh, things I have already explained for reducing the hydrogen and reducing the transverse residual stresses in the weld metal as I have said use of the austenitic filler or the preheating of the base metal also helps to reduce the magnitude of the stresses and uh, the modifying the structure. So, that we have the less crack sensitive structure in the weld metal like preheating this helps to have uh, um, the uh, this uh, helps to have the formation of the softer phases like the bennite or the perlite and varying the welding parameters in such a way that the cooling rates are not high enough in the weld metal for the formation weld metal as well as the heat affected zone for the formation of the crack. So, now I will summarize this presentation. In this presentation I have talked about the, the two types of the cracks which are observed in the heat affected zone one was the lamellar tearing and another was the heat affected uh, uh, cold cracking and uh, uh, I have also talked about the different methods which can be used for uh, uh, for reducing the uh, lamellar tearing tendency as well as uh, reducing the cold cracking tendency. Thank you for your attention.